why it it's just confusion. That's what I really think it is. It's just confusion. An NAACP chapter head resigns amid race questions. Tonight, the lawsuit she filed against Howard University. Plus, shark attacks put beachgoers on edge. Two young people lost arms in attacks just 90 minutes apart. And another big announcement. I'm a candidate for president of the United States. How that is shaping the 2016 landscape next. Now. ABC 7 News at 11 on your side. And first at 11 o'clock, the head of an NAACP chapter stepping down. That's after Rachel Dozal's parents came forward to say she is not black. But it's just the start. We've uncovered new details about Dozal's past, including a discrimination lawsuit that she filed against Howard University. Jay Corp is live at the school tonight with our top story. Jay? Jonathan, when she was a graduate student here at Howard, uh, she actually sued the university for discrimination based on the fact that she was white. The firestorm Rachel Dozel has taken yet another bizarre turn. Monday, Dozel stepped down as the head of the CP chapter in Spokane, Washington, after her parents told the world their daughter has been posing as black and insist she is white. ABC 7 News unearthed court documents showing Dozel, then Mary, and Rachel Moore sued Howard University here in Washington when she was in graduate school. She claimed the university and the chair of the arts department denied her financial aid and teaching opportunities at the historically she was white. Court documents state Moore claimed discrimination based on race, pregnancy, family responsibilities and gender as well as retaliation. In the end, the D.C. Court of Appeals ruled against Moore. Court documents state Moore presented no evidence that Howard's failure to hire her following graduation was motivated by race or any other forbidden classification. It bothers me just because she's, she's fraud, a fraud. She's dishonest. I, I think she's just confused. I, I, think, I think there's a lot of other issues in there. Howard University student Ariel Alford told us she finds this case to be insulting on many levels. I can't go around and say, oh, I'm going to be a white woman today, or I'm going to be a Latina today, or you know what, I'm a Native American. You, you, you don't really do that. We asked university officials to respond to this lawsuit. They declined. Jonathan, back to you. Thank you. Happening tomorrow, mansion murderer suspect Darren Wint is due in court. Wint faces charges for the killings of Amy and Savas Savopoulos, their 10-year-old son Philip, and their housekeeper Vera Figueroa. Police believe he did not act alone, but at this point no other arrests have been made. There is a 1045 morning hearing at D.C. Superior Court. We will have updates on WJLA.com and DC 7 News at noon. Turning now to the weather, we saw scattered rain and thunder tonight. More humidity tomorrow means the chance of more storms. ABC 7's Stephen Rudin is here with the timeline. Steve, it is just a mess out there. Yeah, you know, it is hot, it is humid, as even as we move through the late night hours, we're going to keep the humidity and the warmth early tomorrow morning, and a little bit of sunshine added to the mix, only going to help make the atmosphere more unstable, along with a cold front that's going to move on through. Satellite heavier thunderstorms that moved just to the south of D.C. earlier this evening. We had severe thunderstorm warnings for parts of southern Maryland. Those have now all expired. On the very warm side, it's 82 at Reagan National, 74 at Dulles, 77 in Luray, Charlottesville now at 77 degrees. Here's your express forecast. Waking up early Tuesday morning, we'll be in the 70s. Midday temperatures upper 80s to around 90 degrees and high temperatures around 90 to 95 with field like in the upper 90s to close to 100 degrees. Talk about the timing for those thunderstorms plus a cool down. And the big question is, how long will the cooler air stick around? More on that coming up in just a few minutes. Jonathan. All right, Steve, we'll see you in a few. Thanks. A pair of weekend shark attacks along the North Carolina coasts are keeping a lot of swimmers out of the water, as you can imagine. Two teenagers each lost a section of their arms in separate attacks yesterday afternoon. We're talking about three miles apart. The attacks happened and about 90 minutes apart. Now, both of the teens were told tonight are in good condition. In fact, they could be going home soon. And while adults are still going into the water, a lot of parents are keeping their kids on the beach. I pretty much told my kids not below, not above their knees. We're out here with, we have some little ones. Out on the beach. We're enjoying the sand, but I, you don't see anybody offshore. That pretty safe. But what you do see if you go into the water are a whole lot of patrols, extra patrols, not only in boat, but also by helicopter. This is what's going on in the North Carolina now. Authorities say they will kill any shark that shows aggressive behavior. 
that is swimming near shore. About 100 Metro rail cars will remain off the track than expected. Metro says it does need more time to figure out why this was happening. Doors on the 4000 series malfunctioning, staying open while the train was moving, never a good thing. Until the problem is fixed, there will be fewer eight car trains on the red, green, orange and blue lines. An announcement that was months in